interview and job search strategies that work. In this episode, I want to talk about mentors or individuals that just show you the way, basically, and give you a little guidance, basically. Um, so I'll just tell you a story, right? Um, when I was in, um, when I was overseas, and uh, I worked there, and this guy named, uh, so I was working night shift, actually, and at that night, I was the, on the patching team, so I used to patch the servers. We had, like, I don't know, 2,000 servers, something like that, and we would run uh, PS Tools. So Carlos and I would, would, uh, would, would patch all these servers, or machines, basically, doing uh, PS Tools, because we couldn't use SCCM. Uh, to push push them out. Anyway, long story short, um, what happened was we ended up uninstalling um, a patch, a um, Adobe patch, um, on all the machines, and then we had to reinstall them. When we reinstalled the Adobe, we pushed a script right to uninstall Adobe and reinstall it. And um, anyway, so. Lo- what happened was we uninstalled like uh, Adobe Pro on some of the other machines, maybe like 10 or 15 machines, something like that. And so the next morning, oh, we would solved the problem actually, right? So this is nice. If we came in the next morning, uh, one of our coworkers is like, um, hey, let's tell the director, blah, 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 what happened. So we go and tell the director, Tim, hey, this is what happened, right? But it's solved, right? And, um, we just have to send, you know, people out to these 10 machines. We've already identified the machines that we need this particular Adobe software installed. I think it was Adobe Pro. And um, in it's interesting, when I was in that meeting, it's one of these meetings where, you know, it goes on too long. Where it's like, okay, uh, we fix it and we're good, right? We're solved. And here's the repercussion. Just tell the customer... Um, that these 10 machines were, you know, needed patched or whatever, updated, done. Not some drawn out long. The reason is because in IT, um, some, some people you work with, they'll pick apart your story. And it's almost like they want to go back in time. And maybe some people just want you to see you fail in IT. And they're like, oh, yeah, see, I showed, I told you, you shouldn't have done like this and like that. So when you try new things in IT, you're going to have individuals, you're going to have people that you, that are your managers, I won't say leaders, that will, um, you know, nitpick, nitpick, you know, whatever. And um, in this case, that's what happened. And um, so anyway, and I was, I was like, whatever, you know. And I go out of the meeting, and I was, and as I was walking out, um, I know this guy, Alex. Alex was a another in another uh, section. So I was in um, what was I in? I forget. But anyway, he was in another section. They did programming. They did um, Maximo, IBM Maximo. And um, I said, Hey, do you guys have any open positions where you're at? As I was walking out, because it was like, Really? You know, come on, guys. And um, he's like, Yeah. You know, and oh no, he asked me, um, you know, some questions like, oh yeah, okay. And um, maybe I think a week, uh, not even two weeks later, I was on the team. And I was like um, working for his team, but I was still part of my other team. And um, it wasn't until a couple months later that he brought, you know, he, you know, I was part of their team fully. And wh- why do I tell this story? So I'll tell you this story because at the time I didn't know VMware, I didn't know Commvault, I didn't know, those are the two things I really didn't understand, I didn't know anything about VMware or Commvault. And the environment that he's in, that they were in, um, they used VMware um, for their application servers. It was a Windows box and uh, their IBM is an application server or application that runs on um, Windows Server and the uh, database is um, Microsoft SQL. Of course Oracle is what they really want to put it on but they didn't have that. Anyway, so I learned 
uh, at that job, I learned VMware. That's how I learned VMware, and that's how I learned Commvault. And I, I remember installing Commvault maybe the first time I did it. I remember I was in uh, one of the other buildings, and uh, Rashim was with me, actually. And I was installing it. Like, I said, well, it's not. And I kept saying, well, it's, this, is not, this is not how you install it. I kept saying, well, I found a new way not to in, how, how not to install it, basically. And, uh, and, that, and that's what happened. So uh, what I found out was um, I just needed to turn the debugger on. I needed to add the user to the debuggers group on Windows, on the Windows server, so for Commvault to be installed. So the benefit from that was my the leader, I call him the leader, Alex Garlin, you know, he didn't um he, he didn't jump to the gun and he didn't um he, he just really believed in me, uh, fully. And I always and I'd always tell him, I said, you know, I don't know, but I'll figure it out. I'll find out, you know. And so I'll tell you a couple instances of what happened in that regard. And uh so I needed a they call it, um, what do they call it? They call it stigging or locking down a server, basically, right? And you have these, um, the software that runs this, um, I don't know, it's like a um, checks and balances, if you can, the general term, checks and balances, on a server. And a SQL server that, so we had a SharePoint instance on a server, and I ran this scan against the server and I said oh well we have to you know this the password isn't um strong enough we need to, we need to change the password so jacob and rashim were there and i said oh, yeah well let's just change the password well unbeknownst to all of us actually um you know really it was my fault really truth be told actually let's just say that anyway um so one of the servers was where we we're at and the other server was in uh qatar and it was mirrored, but what four of the what is it four? Uh, so SharePoint, what was it? SharePoint twenty thirteen, I think it was. I forget what year it was. Anyway, so version rather. Anyway, so the um, so it was such a such that the SharePoint um, one of the parts in SharePoint I can't think of right now that works. There's like four parts basically to this particular part of SharePoint databases, four individual databases that are part of SharePoint. And one of them was in Qatar, and the rest were where we were at in Kuwait. And um, so I was, okay, let's just reset the password, right? You know, so we did that. What happens? The director uh, is like, hey, um, SharePoint's down. What's going on, right? And Alex, I remember Alex coming to us, and I had to go to Alex and say, Alex, we um, we broke SharePoint, you know, um, but we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. And he was obviously he was mad, right? Of course, uh, but he just let us figure it out. And um, what we ended up doing was we P to V'd the server, uh, physical to virtual the server, and um, hadn't looked back since. That's that's one of those times where that was that was really nice. I, I also remember. Uh, being at night at working, you know, during a patch cycle, so it was like a Wednesday. So what we do is we we snapshot the VM, the virtual machine. I would, and um, we would do maintenance. We do like an upgrade to the Maximo server or something, and if it didn't work, oh, we just restore back from the snapshot. Good to go. And I remember on occasion, Prabha had to go, he had to do something else. So I was there, and Alex was there, and. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a maximal guy, right? I wasn't a maximal guy at the time, anyway. And he's like, "Okay, well, well um, you know, he's, I'm just figuring, I'm just figuring stuff out as I go, basically. You know, Maximo, how the application servers works. Um, you know, just understanding some of that stuff. It's kind of cool. And yeah, Alex just let me figure it out. Like, okay, you know, and um, it was nice. Yeah, it was. Uh, so why do I tell you all that? What What's the whole point of this? Me telling you this story. Right? Why do you care, basically? I tell you this story because w when you have a, a leader um, like that, that's a, that's a leader, by the way, who understands your strengths and weaknesses, but gives you enough room to fail, but not 
damage everything basically it just gives you enough okay you know not not the moment's notice say it's not working out um, you're not figuring it out we're gonna go a different direction because you go with what you have at the time basically you know and to bring somebody new in um, you know I think he identified the passion that I have for IT I think that's probably what it was and if you're a, a leader yourself and you know you have two individuals and one is like not passionate about IT and the other one is you know um, even if the one that's not passionate has like the higher skill set maybe as I did you know sometimes you tend to go with the person who's more passionate because what they do is they go home and they the problem's in their head and they want to figure it out they want to oh what's the problem I'll think about it yeah and that really benefits two people. The benefits, A, the leader, because the leader can, um, can, can just rely on that person to figure it out. So that person, their checks and balances, there's things they do, meaning the individual, um, not the leader, but the employee, basically, just figures stuff out, just figures it out. And Alex, Alex really understands. So we had a lot of meetings um, passed on meetings, basically, that where everybody would talk, and and that's really the that's probably the second time, really. The other time when I worked uh, in Intel, but the second time Intel, the comp chip manufacturer, yeah. So the sec this is the second time where I was at a, a an area, and it's it's you know one of these things where I, I just need to be quiet, listen more. And um, just absorb knowledge because somebody else has something they want to tell, or they let me just listen before I, I talk. So so that's those are two skills I actually gained from from working with Alex. Actually, one is just learning to fail and just figure it out, and then relying on my team more so rather than being one stop shop. Just rely on your team, train your team, train the people you work with, and and you know. Um, just expect them, you know, uh, do expect them to do great things, and they will. And just having that that faith in an individual to just figure it out, that's that means so much. Actually, I think I think a lot of them, people follow leaders more than they follow probably money. Of course, money is important. By the way, don't get me wrong. Yeah, um, yeah, money is important. I'll, I'll I'll tell you another little tidbit. I guess right where we're on top of the money. Um, if you ever apply somewhere and <laughs> like, I got, actually this has happened to me twice. So I had a, I was, I had an interview, um, for a job overseas making like 130 or whatever it was, 190, 190, that's what it was. Yeah. whoop de doo right? 190. Anyway. So I made the mistake of saying, yeah, I want, um, I'm looking forward to making the money to the person, you know, the, uh, what was it? I, uh, IT operations manager. It was a network job network engineer or something like that job and i didn't get that job of course because i said that and i said like, oh man i shouldn't have said that the other time was when i worked for another company and i was like um uh i basically text the individual i was going to work with who would have been well, who i would have worked with and i said uh um so what's what's the per diem like over there you know basically and he, you know he texts back uh he texts back like you know, I want somebody who works with me and not for money or whatever, right? Like, okay, whatever, dude. You know, reality, right? Reality check. Um, so, yeah. But uh, I know better now, of course. You know, play the game, right? Uh, everybody knows it's about money most of the time anyway. Unless you get to a point where you have so much money that your your, your time is, is so valuable um, it's it's more valuable f for you to turn down a high paying job um, and take a lower paying job because of your time you you can do other things with your time that's probably the only time I, I guess what I'm talking about is maybe those individuals who don't really like it's not a nine to five but they work on projects for instance like somebody might some company might pay somebody twenty grand to do something and they might not take the job because it requires a month. And this other company, they may take the other job from another company to pay them ten grand a month for that particular project. Let's say that's what I'm talking about when I say 
Uh, that probably the only time, right? But you know, majority of folks out there, they just want you know we're looking for money, of course, right? But you know, if we can have a a good uh, job as well, a good work at, or a good leadership, that really helps a lot. It makes makes the job easier. It makes it just a you know better work atmosphere altogether. So I think I think the takeaway that you can take away from this podcast is if you are a, um, a maybe identifying a leader a, a quickly if you can if you get to that level where you can identify a leader um, and or if you can even if you can even meet them halfway meaning you know there's a manager basically and if you know if you just write down your expectations when you go to a company and say this is um, based on what I know about the company, here's what I see my first week looking like. And then you draw it out. Maybe you have a, a picture. Maybe better yet, you just have bullet points on what you think uh, is expected of you, right? And then you might also, which I've done this myself, might also tell the individual that you're working with, manager, who's probably a manager at the time, let's say, who's not a lead, yeah, leader, this is how you work best. This is how you, you're motivated best. This, for instance, if it's a work in office, um, it's okay, I work, I come in at, let's say, 8 or 7 or whatever, and I usually take a break at 10 o'clock, so please don't schedule your meetings for me from 10 to 11, right? And then I, I usually work through lunch, uh, but don't say that because they may try to abuse that for you, you know, like, okay, expect you to work. Um... But uh, if you just put down, okay, and then what you can say is you can say something like, okay, I work until three or four, and if you have something for me to do, I'll spend 30 minutes or an hour a day fi figuring it out or whatever. And so um, that that actually does a lot for you because he, the, he or she doesn't have to, you know... Um, they kind of they kind of treat you better, really. They're trying to treat you like okay, this person knows what's going on. They know their how they work best. They know the environment they work in the best. They're telling me how they work best, and I should really uh, adhere to that if I want to. You know, as a manager, soon to be a leader, if I want to move into that role as a leader, I need to, you know, adhere to what they're talking about because if if the employee tells you, the manager, this is how they work best. That's how uh, it should be. Because if the person knowing that, the fact that they know what how they work best means a lot, actually. And that's easier on you as a manager who's soon to be a leader. Where you don't have to worry, you don't have to really, um, you don't have to really delegate a lot, really, with the person like that, who's like, who understands the atmosphere, who understands, like, how things go. And the other benefit is they're only, probably only going to come to you when uh, there's a problem. For instance, they might not know the environment, the company culture environment, or maybe the end customer they don't understand. But um, they're going to come to you when they have a problem, you know, and you, and you know it's not going to be something simple. You know, especially if they already have a couple years of experience in whatever, let's say, IT IT field. They're going to come to you if there's really a problem. And, uh, you know, what you're after is, as a manager, soon to be a leader, you want to really, you want to try, if a person comes to you and says, in, you know, this is how I work best, the, the very next thing you want to do is you want to ask your other employees who you work for, actually. Hey, well, how do you guys work best? Can you guys give me... And you should probably know that already, actually, by the way. But if you don't, ask them. How do you guys work best? Um, I want to change it up. I want to make it, you know, more uh, adaptable to your schedule. You know, how do you... What, what kind of breaks do you want to take? And, and, of course, you know, they're going to be a little offset or a little like, oh, hey, what's going on with this? Or are we, you know, something changing? Uh, but just explain to them that, you know, you're the, I work for you. 
as a as a leader. That's what you want to explain to them. I work for you. Um, you know, I want to do stuff on your behalf. I want to give you everything possible. So I I can I can absorb any criticism, any uh, back blow from the my leadership, and you don't have to absorb it because that's less stress on you. And I'll I'll own that basically is what you're what you're after. That's how you lead basically. You know, you absorb all the nonsense stuff that doesn't really matter, and you know um, you're there really to fight for the employee uh, because the other leaders maybe don't understand and some take out of context. So you're there to just kind of oh okay this is how it is you know and since that person knows you. It's going to come across different than it would if that, let's say, your manager goes directly to the employee, whoever it is. It, it's, it's not going to be the same uh, because they they look at them differently than they look at you. They look at them in a different light. They have um, they don't have the same relationship, basically, that they have with you, that they have with uh, your uh, leadership. So, um, yeah, just to finish this off, uh, thanks a lot, Alex Garland. Really taught me a lot. Really appreciate it. Um, Prabha, <laughs> Jacob, uh, Edgardo, um, <laughs> Rashim. Yeah, uh, Prabha, of course. You know, you guys are uh, awesome. Thanks. Uh, yeah, uh, really enjoyed working with you guys. So, yep. Okay. Thanks, everybody, listening to the podcast. Have a great day.